Welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be talking about a really cool concept called short circuiting. And what this is, is when you have a large expression, you can actually evaluate the expression early without having to go through the entire expression. So how exactly does this work and what's the benefit? Well, first let's talk about the benefit. The benefit of this is that when you are executing your code and let's just say you have some huge expression and, or, and, and, or, and, <laughs> not, you have a bunch of, uh, of these operators in this large expression. Well, the benefit is that if this is able to short circuit halfway through evaluating this expression, then we can save computing time because we don't have to worry about the other half. So this is going to speed up your programs. So the way this thing works is that there's these rules that allow us to know whether an entire expression is true or false early. And this is built on the foundational ands and ors. If we look at the truth table, I'll show you what I mean and you will be able to see how this works. So if you remember, we have two inputs for these and then we write all the values, true, true. And sometimes this is easy to think about if you look at the odd one out. So we have or and then we have and. Um, and you'll see what I mean by odd one out here in a second. So for or, the odd one out is this bottom one where the value is false. All the other ones are true. For and, the odd one out is the true, which is the first one. So all the others are false. So the way the short circuiting works is that anytime for or that there is a true, we know automatically that the end result is true. So here's a true, here's a true, here's a true. When they're both false, we know it's false. The opposite kind of happens with the and. Anytime there's a false, we know that the value is going to be false. So I'll box these here. We have a false, a false, oh, and a false. <laughs> okay. So what that means is that the only time that the true happens is when they're both true. So you kind of think about it in a different way than you normally do. You just think about what the bare minimum requirements over here are in order to know the end result. And when you're reading this from left to right, sometimes you can know the end result before having to look at both of the inputs. The circling and squaring is just kind of making things a little confusing here, but I thought it, I thought it'd be helpful. <laughs> There we go, that's a little bit easier to see. <laughs> so the greens have the trues, which automatically make these true, and the purples have the falses, which automatically make these falses. But not all of this is gonna be useful, only the ones on the left. So if you're reading this from left to right, and you see a true here, and we're working with the or, then you automatically know that the end result is true. So true, true, and that's all we're able to do. For the, for the one down here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna evaluate this first one and it's gonna be false. And then it's gonna be like, well, I can't, I can't know for sure because the next one might be true. And in that situation, it requires us to evaluate both of these to see if the second one is true. And works in a similar way. So it can go through here and anytime it sees a false on the left, false, we know the end result is false. False, we know the end result is false. For this one here, it doesn't work quite the same way because it requires us to evaluate the first one and it doesn't give us enough information. And then once we get to the second one, it can know that the end result is false. So that one's not able to short circuit. So to wrap this up, the first two here, when we have true, true and true, false, we are able to short circuit to true for the ors. For the bottom two down here, false, true and false, false, we are able to short circuit the ands and know that they're false. That truth table allows us to build some fundamental rules for Boolean simplification, essentially. So let me just write a couple of these out. So here's the first one. When we have true or X, well, we automatically know that when we hit a true, the whole expression is going to be true. So this just shortens down to true. If we have false or X, well, this doesn't tell us enough information. That means this one has to be true. If it's true, the end result is true. If it's false, the end result is false. So that means that the output is actually just X. So whatever X is, the output is the same thing. Now for the ands, if we have true and X, well, we don't necessarily know if this one is true right away, so we have to evaluate the whole thing. So similar to this one, we have the value of X. The last one here is false and X. For this one, 
false is enough information to know that the end result is not going to be true because they have to both be true in order for the end result to be true. That means if we hit a false on the left, this is just going to be false. So what I would do is I would write these down on flashcards and put the end result on the uh, other side and just practice to memorize these associations. So this can come up if you always have values that are true or false, which isn't gonna happen a whole lot. Most of the time, these are going to be some variable. And you can just kind of think about this as the evaluation of that variable as true or false. So if you had email verified and evaluated to true or false, you can then think of what the short circuiting is going to be. So that's how you can think about this in computer science. So in computer science, we don't really have to do the simplification. We don't have to worry about taking the expressions I just gave you on the left and changing them to the result on the right. That's all going to happen at runtime when the program is executing because the value is gonna be evaluated on the left and it's going to allow us to just jump to the end result. The whole idea behind Boolean simplification, that's something you can do for usually circuits. And what that does is it allows us to make more simple circuits. It applies a little bit less in computer science, but the same concepts apply. And you can use those same concepts to simplify large expressions if you need. But the primary use of this is at runtime, we don't even have to worry about it. So for example, we can write an expression, it'll short circuit if it can, and it will not short circuit if it can't. There is one thing you have to worry about though, because this can actually come up where the short circuiting causes your application to not execute something that you wanted to execute. So if you remember, inside of an if statement, you put some kind of expression here. And generally this just gets evaluated to a value, but sometimes you're going to put functions in here and that can change if it short circuits, not all of the functions are gonna get executed. So earlier in another video, I had something like this, where we have a function on the left and then or a function on the right. If this one passes as true, this one on the right is never going to get executed. 99% of the time that's going to be fine. But if something happens in these functions that you need them both to execute, then we have an issue because this one's only going to execute some of the time. And that's if this evaluates to false. This can cause an unpredictable result to happen where a function's only getting executed sometimes within this if statement. And that's kind of unpredictable. <laughs>